my name is Chad Carruthers, and I'm here with Worship Online, and we are talking about some issues that some of us guitar players face. When we don't have the best of gear and maybe like budget-friendly stuff, sometimes we can project feelings of inadequacy or maybe insignificant, like, oh man, I'm not a good enough player, I don't have A, B, or C, and today we're gonna cover all of that in this video. Part one, we're gonna cover just a few of the more normal, traditional things. Part two, we're gonna get a little weird, and I'm gonna show you how to take that weirdness and make it musical and actually make it functional in a mix and for a band. So you're not gonna wanna miss part two. So if you wanna see part two and you wanna see how to make weird sound good, click the link in the description below, put in your email address, and I will send you part two, and you will then have all the knowledge of how to make weird things like ring modulation and low bit rates and things like that musical. So you're not gonna wanna miss part two. Click the link, get it, and let's go. Okay, first off, modulation. Modulation, it's such a powerful tool if used correctly. And uh, the great thing is, culturally, you'll see, you know, throughout history, back in the 80s, chorus was massive. Through the 90s, no one wanted a chorus pedal, like, near them. Now, we're back to it. So you're able to kind of look back through the culture of music and pinpoint, like, oh man, this was huge then, this was huge then, this was huge then. Uh, if you look at like old, you know, surf music from the 50s, tremolo was really big. And then we started getting into uh, some of the, like the rotary stuff, you know, Clapton was using Leslie style speakers and, and all that. It's just a way of getting your guitar to sometimes sound not like a guitar, but also to have an even more creative voice. So modulation is nothing to just glaze over. I really think it's a powerful tool and I, and I want to hopefully break some of this down for you guys today. So first things first, if you are playing a Strat and you turn on a chorus pedal, you instantly have like Tears for Fears vibe. You know, like it. You know, you put it in the, the quack positions. And it instantly starts sounding kind of lush. Right? So the pedal that we are using today, it's called the Flamma. This uh, pedal line just came out. They are extremely affordable. The entire line maybe would set you back $150. And that's the whole line of pedals. The thing I love about them is this modulation pedal has, I mean, let's see here, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's got like 12 sounds in it, 12 different types of modulation packed in something that like, I don't know, like looks like a stick of gum. It's pretty amazing. So what I'm using first is chorus. Now chorus is extremely popular in kind of modern music right now. It kind of instantly takes your guitar, makes it sound dreamy. Um, without it, and that's, you know. Here's with. Now, chorus can get you into trouble because not everything needs it. There was a time in musical history that was like, oh, if we're not playing like big distortion, it has to have chorus on it. I, I feel victim to that. I don't want you to have the same mistakes that I have, you know, that I've made. What I would do is, in a situation like this, I would look at this pedal and I would see chorus, tremolo, rotary, and that's about, and vibrato. So chorus, tremolo, vibrato, and rotary. Those would be my first go-tos on a multi-effect pedal like this. So chorus, you know, you kind of hear that. Trem, tremolo, You're literally just taking your volume, turning it up and down, turning it up and down. And there's a cool thing on this, uh, I have a depth knob, so how, low the volume gets and then how high the volume gets. So it can be nice and subtle or I can make it, you know, and let's, let's turn up the speed and see how fast we can get it. sounds like an organ when you do that, when you turn up the Leslie. So 
So for me, in most situations, I'm using tremolo as a way to get the guitar to have extra movement without me having to do a lot of extra picking. So it makes you sound like you're doing a lot more work than you really are. So let's take, Darren, pick a key. F. F, all right. <laughs> So right there. So I'm just playing basic chords right there and between a little bit of delay and that tremolo, all of a sudden my guitar had a lot more character to it and I didn't have to like pick, 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 pick. I didn't have to try to overplay. It was just a nice, gentle, extra movement to my tone. So that's how I would use tremolo. Now you can also get a little crazy, but we'll touch on that in part two. All right, so moving on, the vibrato. Now vibrato, it's like the bigger, older, meaner brother to chorus. So you have chorus, which is gentle and sweet and luscious and liquidy and, all the buzzwords, whatever you'd like to call it. Vibrato, it's, it's really just, it's a lot more. So here we go, here's vibrato. It takes that pitch that happens in chorus, which that pitch is doing just a little bit, and vibrato just is like, just going for it the whole time. So vibrato, you definitely can use it sparingly, kind of maybe like on more like lead lines. Let's turn up that speed a little bit. Turn the depth down so it's not as like, you know. Uh, let's go back to F, that sounded good. Hear it without delay. Turn up the effect just a little bit more, so turning up the speed and You know, so I mean, you could use it as like single note stuff, which is killer, like. And you get just kind of this movement happening. So vibrato is definitely something that I would use sparingly and more if, you know, if I'm doing long lead lines, something like that. So let's. Uh, a little too much, let's take it down. And you keep messing with the depth until you find something that's musical. There we go. Yeah. So that's how I would use vibrato. Now, right next to it in this situation is called rotary. Pretty much same thing, but it's simulating a spinning speaker. So you kind of get that swirly, spinny sound. So it's just not as dramatic. It's not, it's not changing your pitch as dramatic as the vibratos. This was actually the sound that I used in the audio sample. I don't know if uh, we can reference that. That part, I'm using some reverb, I'm using some delay, but the real character-driven thing is the rotary sound. You know, so. Same thing, you can turn up the depth. And you're not gonna get crazy pitch, you're just gonna get more dramatic effect. 
It almost sounds like it's spinning. Well, the actual mechanics used to be a literal spinning speaker to create this sound for organ players. And guitar players were plugging their guitars into organ, you know, Leslie's. And someone was like, we gotta put a stop to this. We gotta make a pedal. So whoever that was, I'm very, very appreciative. And most of the time in worship music and CCM music, you kind of want to lean more on the subtle side. You know, a lead part really does have a characteristic tone. Maybe turn up the effect more, so the depth in this situation. Phil Wickham's This Is Amazing Grace, the guitar line. So. You could use a rotary to achieve that type of sound. So that wraps up part one, where we talked about just a couple of the normal things. In part two, we're gonna get a little bit weird and go through some of the more uncommon uses of modulation. To get part two, you can click the link in the description below, put your email address in, and that's how you will get part two and all of the additional information on how to make weird sounds musical and usable. So, all right, here we go. <laughs>